Hello, welcome to Revive Church and Revive Online. We're so happy you can join us this morning. We've got tons of amazing content for you to engage with, and I really hope you can uh, yeah, connect with us. You can chat online, you can request prayer uh, by, by clicking on the request prayer button and a host will pray with you. You know, I really hope you're gonna be inspired by what God is gonna speak to you about this morning. And uh, I encourage you, be inspired as we go into this week. You know, church, we're all doing our bit. We're social distancing, we've been, you know, we're isolating ourselves. Uh, but I think this guy might have taken it to a whole nother level. Well, you know, church, we are physically saving lives, you know, by not gathering, by isolating ourselves, um, we are saving lives. But you know, the church has always been in the business of saving lives. We are God's people carrying the hope of Jesus Christ. And that's what we just heard in that video, carrying the hope of Jesus. And so if you're gonna bring the good news, I wanna encourage you, um, as we, if you enjoy this morning, to share it, share it to your friends, share it to your family next week, so that more people can hear about this amazing hope that we have in Jesus. You know, we're open to the world, so come on down. You know, Rose and I, we have four young kids, and lockdown is hard. I think we're on to our 11th showing of Frozen 2, and uh, as Elsa sings, we're all in this place of going into the unknown. You know, in this time where we are going into the unknown, we can still hold on to what God is doing, what God is saying to us. You know, we can praise, we can worship. We're gonna hear Pastor Peter talk a little bit more about praise a bit later. So the creative team put together some songs to sing along to. So let's join in with them right now. Thanks for 
men, an amazing worship song. Well, hi church, Rose here. You can't see it, but I'm stood on a pile of books because I'm too short for the camera. It's strange uh, being in our front room, turning it into a studio. We miss you all, but it's amazing that we can connect online. And uh, I promised last week, after showing my favourite meme of the week last week, that we do it every week. Well, I've got a great one for you to this week, and it's also a holy meme as well. So here you go. The last section we call waiting, and it's a great thing to pause in the presence of God and to ask the question, Lord God, what are you saying to us? And then, of course, to wait for an answer. Uh, I've just been pausing uh, between these... Oh dear, I've just caught, caught fire. <laughs> oh my word. Love it, don't you? I'm sure you've all probably seen it in the week and many more. Keep sending them to us um, so that we can obviously do that every week, have a bit of a laugh and uh, bring some laughter into what is sometimes a difficult time. So, since we last spoke a week ago, total lockdown has happened and for many of us, uh, aside from our amazing key workers and also those who are sick and we're really with you and praying for you guys. This has maybe been a time where we've had more space to step back, take stock, rethink. And a, a clear message has really been coming through to many of us. I've spoken with people throughout the week and also for me and Ben, to many people that I speak to, a clear message is coming through. And that is, take this time to be still. Take this time to find the space that isn't always available in our normal lives. You know, this is a really crucial time, particularly for us as a church. God is in one way affirming the modern way of doing things. He's pushing us out into the marketplace where the people are. That is now generally online. Where do people socialize? They socialize online. And that is where we now find ourselves as a church. But that doesn't mean that we as Christians find another way to be spoon fed our faith by binging on internet Christianity. I really believe that God is saying to us, be still and know that he is God. And for some of us, we may not know this God. We may not be a Christian. And um, I really still believe the message is the same. In this space, in this time, why not just take a step back, take stock and ask the question, who is this God? The God who created the heavens and the earth. Who is this God who is being beamed all across the internet now by many, many churches? And the way in which we do this, the way in which we find that space to be with him, to really be still and know him, is through prayer. Now, when we think of prayer, depending on how we grew up or what churches we've been associated with, we may think of the Lord's Prayer that we had to say in school or, you know, praying like this on our knees in the, in the movies. Actually, you know, prayer is less about speaking and more about listening, more about just stopping and trying to connect with the one who made us. And we're just gonna um, speak to a couple of people now from our church, Lara and Gwyneth, who are prayer warriors, uh, mighty women of God. And we're gonna just have a little chat with them to hopefully get some tips on how we can be able to find that space to switch off and be still. So I just wanna welcome Gwyneth and Lara. Hi. Hello. Hello. And uh, we're just going to share a couple of tips for what, what we do to enable ourselves to be able to kind of switch off and be still. And obviously it's a hard thing to kind of um, quantify, but we want to try and just put across a few tips that help us. So Gwyneth, I'm just going to hand over to you first, just a few tips on how you find the space in a busy life to be still. So um, the being still bit, it's not, not a thing I find particularly easy, but a good place to start usually is if God says it, if it's in the word and it's what he wants us to do, then there's help out there from him to be able to do it and to find it. There's a scripture that actually literally says, be still and know that I am God. And if you want to look it up, it's in Psalm 46, verse 10. Um, and he, you know, he says that many, many more times in other parts of his word as well. So that's a good foundation to start off with. And it's what he wants us to be able to do um, so that we can hear him as well as chat on to him. Um, I suppose because of the busyness and having a busy brain, for me, I find um, 
doing something, which sounds a bit strange, actually helps me to slow down in my brain. So it's a brilliant thing. I like to go on the canal with the dog. And um, I think the visual experience of God's creation helps. And the fact that my brain has got to make my legs work to walk and navigate the paths and all of that stuff um, somehow then saves a little bit of space in my brain where um, as my heart tunes in, so my thoughts can tune in and and my hearing can tune in. Um, and yet more often than not, and it's it's um, it's good for you. It's good exercise. We're allowed to do it once a day. Even the government has given us permission for that. So yeah, if you if you find it difficult to uh, to be still, it's a good place to start. Quite often after that experience, I'll come home, and the stillness has arrived, and I can then go and actually be literally still and continue in that communion, that communication with God, listening to Him, and um, it, and, and in a complete um, stillness. But yeah, that's just one of the ways that I would I would do it. Well, thank you, Gwyneth. Gwyneth. And Lara, um, you've got some tips as well, some things that help you. Yeah, I mean, what we were talking about before being recorded was about how God sometimes gives us little um, pointers, little nudges about sending us a message. Um, and what I got for Mother's Day was this lovely card from my lovely daughter, Isla, saying, be still. Hey. <laughs> And uh, I got that on Mother's Day and then put it to one side and carried on being very busy with all my four children and everything else. And then the next day I got a lovely Bible for Mother's Day, which was a, a drawing Bible, um, a colouring in Bible. And I sat there thinking, oh, this is really nice. I'm just quietly meditating on the word, colouring in scripture and allowing it to sink in. Um, and then later on in the week, as it was getting quite busy again, I just thought, do you know what? I need to just go for a walk. And I know that might be hard for some of us at the moment, um, but went up a little hill nearby um, and uh, just felt God just be with me in that moment. Mm -hmm. And then the next day I opened up a devotional and it was talking again about being still. And I think God was trying to send me a load of messages, little hints to say, be still, be still. Yeah. And I think... It's, it's easy for us to um, ignore or not notice those things. But I think as a tip for any of us, actually, when God wants to speak to us, he will probably speak to us in a lots of little different ways yeah. so that we can then know that he is talking to us. And I think in this time, finding those little gaps like, like Gwyneth does with a walk and I did with a little walk or just half an hour in my bedroom with a cup of tea in the morning or whatever, just finding that little bit of time to be still. Yeah. Brill, thanks for that. And I know um, just before we came on air as well, we were talking about the fact that one of the first things when we switch off from the internet and all of the stuff going on there is there's another level of switching off that finding our space that like you've talked about mm. different ways to connect with him, but also just going to him with the belief that he wants to meet with us mm. and that he is, it says in, in the Bible that he isn't um, some master, but he's actually our friend. He doesn't want to be mm. our boss, but he wants to be our friend. We were talking about that before. So just going into that with the belief that he wants to meet with us. And for those of us who may not know him, you know, just going into him and, and asking him to show himself, to reveal himself. You know, when the three of us here and many other people around the world uh, will testify that, you know, when you ask that question, he responds. Mm, yeah and I think with Jesus if we look at the Bible with Jesus he um he went away a lot to just be quiet and be still he went away to have that little bit of time um either up a mountain or or early in the morning or late at night and you know and I think he was showing a really good example there that actually this is a good opportunity for us all to just slow down mm. and be still and, yes. and find that precious time because actually that is where we are filled with yeah. the living water and with everything yeah. that we need to go along our daily walk. And I, and I really think that this is an opportunity for us all to really be still and yeah. hear him more and get to know yeah. him more. 
And we don't want to miss it by being constantly online. And so that's why mm. we're only doing a Sunday service in the morning and then our Wednesday evening communion. Um, mm -hmm. We are creating a resources page where we can put lots of devotionals to help you get into the word, worship playlists. Uh, the link's coming up later in the service, but we don't want to inundate you with online content. We are encouraging you, church, to switch off, switch mm -hmm. off from online and then switch off to find your space, whether that's a walk or colouring or just locking yourself away from the children for two minutes. Mm -hmm. Just switch off to find that space for him because in this time, there are things that he wants to be saying to us. Yeah. Amen. So thank you so much, Gwyneth and Lara. And um, I'm sure we'll hear more of you over the coming weeks and months as well. And uh, everyone stay safe and keep healthy. And we look forward to being back together in face to face. Amen. Amen. Bye. So like we just heard, just because we're online doesn't mean we need to be online all the time. Let's be focused in on, on connecting with God uh, as, we go in, as we go through this week. Before we go into to Pastor Peter's message, just want to show you a quick video. So take a look. So for us to continue the amazing work that Revive does in the community, we rely on your generous giving and donations. If you normally give to Revive and want to continue to, we would really encourage that. And uh, there's now a give, an online link to be able to give, and it's here. You can give by credit card, debit card, or set up a direct debit. And for anyone who's new who wants to give into the work of Revive, then the same stands for you as well. We really appreciate your generosity. Okay, so we now have Pastor Peter coming to get, bring a word, which we know will be amazing, speaking right into the situation that we find ourselves in. And you know, church, this is actually Pastor Peter's last week as the senior leader of Revive Church. And we just wanna really honor him and Janice for all that they have done over the last 20 years, for the amazing foundation that we are able to continue to build on, for all that they have done and laid down for us. So. I know right now, wherever you are, you'll be giving them a little cheer or a little clap or just, yeah, just encouraging them. Maybe this week you want to send them a message just to tell them the way they've impacted your life. And we will, of course, be celebrating all that they've done on Easter Sunday. We'll have a celebration service. So uh, make sure you tune in for that one. OK, so over to Pastor Peter. Good morning, Revive Church. Good morning, everyone is tuning in. It's uh, lovely to be able to talk to you this morning and I hope uh, the short word that I'm bringing will bring a blessing to you and will help you in some way. Um, so here we are and uh, church a little bit different, can't congregate together as we normally would, but we're one in spirit, we're one in love and we're here to comfort and encourage and help one another. Trust us as we seek God for the ways moving forward in the climates that's very difficult that we're used to, but we know in God there is a way. We want to be on the front foot and not the back foot. And we want to be a church that will bring blessings to one another and blessings to people in our town. And um, I'm just going to read this morning. My, my message is turn your setbacks into a comeback through praise. Turn your setback into a comeback through praise and we're going to be looking if you've got your bibles we're looking at two chronicles chapter 20 uh jehoshaphat king jehoshaphat uh, and please read through that at your letter and study it i'm sure you'll get much from it and it'll be help and encouragement to you but i'm going to just read the first three verses of the chapter just to get us a flavor of what's going on uh, and in verse one it starts after this the armies of the moabites ammonites and some of the Menites declared war on jehoshaphat Messengers came and told Jehoshaphat, 
A vast army from Edom is marching against you from beyond the Dead Sea. They are already at En Gedi. Jehoshaphat was terrified by this news and begged the Lord for guidance. He also ordered everyone in Judah to begin fasting. So people from all the towns of Judah came to Jerusalem to seek the Lord's help. Here we have a nation in crisis. Uh, they're being overwhelmed when they hear the news that their enemies, armies, are coming against them to get them captive or annihilate them. And it says that Jehoshaphat was terrified. He knew that of overwhelming odds that was against them. He knew that the nation wasn't prepared for what was coming their way. And he did the best thing possible. He sought the God of heaven in the situation. And that's what we're doing at this moment for our nation is in crisis in a different way, but nevertheless it's crisis. And it's the time for God's people, you and I, to seek God more in prayer. And we already started prayer and fasting. And we wanna encourage you to join the team of praying and fasting at home during this very difficult, difficult season. So a nation in crisis with, uh, with Jehoshaphat, um, he, Obviously, he, he, he threw himself at God and he said these things, as you read in 2 Chronicles 20, he's pleading with God regarding the situation. And he says these words, Lord, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are upon you. And God answers that prayer in a very remarkable way. God sends a prophet to tell him that don't worry, the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. And I am going to give you victory. You'll not need to fight. You just need to get the praises and worshippers in place. And we read on that Jehoshaphat, on the day when the enemies was coming over the next day, he sent his army out, but he sent the worship team, a great big worship team, to praise and worship God. And they were singing of the faithfulness of God and his love endures forever. And then suddenly, suddenly, the God, it says, ambushed their enemies and they all started killing one another uh, and everybody was was killed uh, and the people of Judah were on a great victory that day, a great victory. And it was the God of heaven who had given them that victory. When they started to praise and worship the Lord, the Lord set up ambushes against their enemies. That's a great thought for us. So sometimes there's things going on in our world, oppressing us. Sometimes there's very difficult life situations and we need to call on the God of heaven. And sometimes we need to say, Lord, will you ambush the enemies? You know what's going on there. And it's remarkable the power, what praise can do. Amen, amen. The Valley of Decision. Another point I just want to raise this morning. We're all in valleys of decisions at certain points in our life. Jehoshaphat made the right call in his valley of decision regarding Judah and their enemies and won a great victory and God did it all for him when they praised and worshipped and obeyed what God said. And we are in valleys of decisions in, now in the days we're in right now. Uh, and just let's make the right call. Let's draw closer to God. Let's believe God that he's going to work in us and through us, even in the midst of a difficult scenario, scenario in our nation. The valley of decision. In Joel chapter 3, verse 14, it says, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. I want to ask you a question. Are you in a valley of decision right now? Have you, is there something that you need to make a call on? The best, are you a person who's never asked Jesus Christ into your life? Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. If you'll open the door and invite him in and sincere about it, he'll come into your life. And it'll be the best decision you ever make. Best decision indeed. He will give you his love. He'll give you peace of mind and he will give you joy and he will give you the gift of eternal life. Have you made that decision for Jesus yet? Maybe there's other people who, need to make a decision about returning to the Lord. Maybe you've drifted. Maybe your commitment to church has, has dwindled off in recent months. Maybe it's time for you to come back to God. Is it time for you to make that decision? I will serve the Lord. I'll put the Lord first in my life. If we do that, God will always, always look after us. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. Is there people running away from things this morning? 
Maybe you need to turn and consider and face your fears. Maybe you are going down a life direction that you know really is not right. Today is the day of decision. Why not change and turn around and go what you know is the right direction? So Jehoshaphat was a great leader, but he knew he had a great God. He knew that he needed to serve the God of heaven and put him in first place. In time of crisis, there's no better place to be than in God's presence, making our pleas with God and worshipping him for who he is. And for the people of God, maybe there's people because of the situation. I know there's a lot of people in our nation panicking, uh, fearful uh, because of the um, a lot of things that we don't all know yet. What's it's all going to pan out? But God wants us to trust in Him through it all. Passage of Scripture, Philippians four, verse six and seven. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need, and thank Him for all that He's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Jesus Christ. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as we live in Jesus Christ. And Jesus told in John, John 15 about abiding in him, walking close to him, and we will be strengthened and the Lord will be with us. Amen. Do you need to come back to Jesus this morning? Do you need to draw close to him? Do you need to make a decision and you are going to give God quality time in prayer and his church, you're going to be faithful to go to the Lord's church where he has planted you. Moving on, the, after the prophet brought the word to Jehoshaphat, one of the wonderful things that, that it says, and I'm going to read this because it's incredible, the valley of blessing. It tells us that when Jehoshaphat are defeated, well, the Lord had defeated their enemies, it says that they took plunder for three days. The enemies that had killed one another left an enormous amount of plunder. And it goes on to say in verse 24, on the fourth day, they gathered together in the valley of blessing, which got its name that day because the people praised and thanked the Lord there. It is still called the Valley of Blessing. God wants us living in the Valley of Blessing, not the Valley of Fear, the Valley of Sorrow, but the Valley of Blessing. That is a place for the people of God that God has prepared. The Valley of Blessing. What does it look like? Another account, um, a story, a Bible story, uh, Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16. We, rec we read that they was in a, a very difficult place, that they were being faithfully following God, uh, and it was almost like the world collapsed. And sometimes we say, God, why have you not done this? Why have you not done that? Sometimes we've just got to leave things with God. He loves us, and he understands, and his ways are always best and always right. Paul and Silas are there, they're in prison, they've been thrown into prison, they're bleeding, they're hurting. It tells us they was in stocks, they was in chains, uh, they was in a very difficult situation. And they could have then dwelt in the Valley of Sorrow. They could have said, woe is me, this is not right, God, why should we serve you when we've ended up like that? But they didn't. They made a decision that we are going to herald in an atmosphere of blessing. So they praised, they started to praise and worship God. And it says, though the prisoners was amazed when they saw them doing this, that they weren't in the Valley of Sorrows, they was in the Valley of Blessing. And they praised and they worshiped God. And it says about midnight that the, uh, there was an earthquake and all the, the prison doors flew open. The prisoners was free, everyone was free and everybody was rejoicing. And the breakthrough came through Paul and Silas in a difficult situation, praising and worshipping God. And not only that, the Philippian jailer and his household became Christians as a result of what they just witnessed. They was amazed. And sometimes God allows us to be in difficult situations to impact someone else's life, to impact someone else's life. But coming back to the praise and the worship, God wants us to be our worshippers. You know, so many victories are won in the spiritual realm when God's people praise 
and worship him. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, the Bible tells us. Sometimes we forget we need to take our place and we need to start to worship him. It tells us in the Bible, for the spirit of heaviness, put on the garment of praise. Are you feeling heavy? Is things weighing down? Put on the garment of praise and start to worship him and adore him. And the presence of God will come into your room wherever you're praying. Turn your setbacks into comebacks by praising God. Amen. One more script, well, a couple more scriptures. Psalm 5, 5 verse 11. But let all who take refuge in you, Lord, rejoice. Let them sing joyful praises forever. Spread your protection over them, that all who love your name may be filled with joy. Lord, spread your hand of protection upon all the people who are watching this this morning. Lord, and may they know your joy. May they know your presence. May they rejoice in you, the God of their salvation, and burst out in wonderful praise and worship to you, almighty God. Psalm 71 verse 23, I will shout for joy and sing your praises, for you have ransomed me. God has ransomed us. That alone is worthy of all our praise. He gives us life. One more scripture, Psalm 100 verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Amen. Let's pray for the breakthrough. Let us live in the valley of blessing. Let us believe God to live in victory. In our personal lives and in our church life, let us believe that breakthrough is coming. Let's be a people of praise. Let's worship him on a daily basis because he is worthy, worthy to be praised. In the valley of decision, let us make the decision today that we are going to increase our worship to the Lord God Almighty because he is worthy and breakthroughs will come when we worship God. Thank you for listening. God bless you all.
Thank you so much for coming and joining us for Revive Online. It's been awesome to have you stick around, have a chat with everyone on the chat, you know, speak to our host. If something's impacted you this morning, if Peter's message has impacted you or anything else, maybe the worship, then have a chat with someone. You know, don't leave today without exploring what, what this is, what faith is, uh, because it, it'd be really great for you to be connected into us. You know, there's a, a link here for you to to connect in uh, revivechurch.uk forward slash new sign up and we can keep you in in the loop kids well done for getting through if you're still there and um, get onto the resources page that is where all the kids content that's been flying into us from all over the place and um, you can have your kids service now badger your parents go for it we've also on that page got worship content We've got a Spotify playlist and also we've got a Revive um, Worship YouTube playlist. So get it on, get it on your TV, get some worship music. It's going to impact you. It's going to get into your atmosphere and it's going to be so awesome. The link is here. Finally, we love you. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you all for Wednesday Night Communion, 8 p.m. over on the website. See you later. <laughs>